Developer, developer Diaries number 17, securing your valence portal with SSL, and Richard's going to take this one on. So, Richard, I'm going to make you presenter just or just to make sure if you have any problems. All right. Post, I should say. Okay. All right. Looks like I am the host now. Right. I'll show my uh, camera for just a moment to say hello. Uh, so hi, everybody. I'm Richard Malone. Um, this uh, session is really by popular demand. Uh, we have an old web page out there that people hit all the time. It's one of the top hit things on our web page about how to uh, apply an SSL certificate to a valence instance. I think a lot of people uh, get to that web page even if they don't have valence, they're just trying to apply an SSL certificate to an Apache instance. And uh, when we did a survey not too long ago about what people would like to see in these developer diaries, this how to apply an SSL certificate and make a valence instance available to the outside was one of the top things. So I, I've been reluctant to do it for a while because it's a, it's a really complicated process and it, it's really one of the craziest things I've ever tried to, to demonstrate live. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to try to go through it. I'm going to stop my video now and show my screen. And I'm going to start with some slides here just to sort of walk you through the process. All right, Johnny, can you confirm you can see that? Yes, I can see your, your slide. All right, great. Okay, so before we get started, I'll, I'll do some warnings here. Uh, the process is convoluted and messy, okay? So uh, that's one thing. And also, you really shouldn't proceed unless you have, have all the prerequisites ready. And I, I have another slide that's gonna bring you through all the prerequisites, like what you really need to have ready before you even try this. Uh, you'll have to be okay with some valence downtime for whatever valence instance you wanna apply this to. And you should really have a good backup. I mean, it's probably nothing you really need a backup for, but that's sort of just a disclaimer that, I, you know, if you're following my process, I really hope that you would have a good backup before trying to make any modifications like this. Um, you can always contact us if you need help with this process. We do, you know, we do help our valence customers through this process if you, you know, you have support. Uh, that's no problem. I mean, we really like you to try it on your own, but if you need help, you can certainly reach out to either support or myself. And uh, I'm doing this together with you guys totally live. We're gonna go through the entire process, just you know, do it live. Many things could go wrong. Like I said, it's convoluted and messy. I think I'm gonna be able to get through it all and get it working in the end. But if we run into any sort of major issues and something's not working, you know, maybe we'll just stop and then have a part two of this. But hopefully I'll you know, try to get through it all. All right, so let's go on to the prerequisites. So you know, if you, if you need to, you can create a special valence instance with instance manager to apply an SSL certificate for encryption. And the reason I mention this is because there's really not that much point of applying an SSL certificate to a valence instance that's just internal to your network and is otherwise secured through your firewall and so forth, and there's no access to the outside world. Many times customers are setting up valence instances to the outside world with encryption for very specific purposes, like they want to set up a portal that their customers will use or that their salespeople will use or that their vendors will use. And the internal users within their companies will just use a different valence instance that is not uh, secure. Um, so you really should you know, create that valence instance first and have that working without the SSL certificate to make sure that's ready to go. You need to have QSEC offer password or equivalent access uh, with another profile. <clears throat> you know, we're gonna be using a lot of uh, administration things that require IOSIS config authority. So best thing to do is try to have the uh, QSEC offer password access, okay? Uh, become friends with your ne network administrator. It's sort of like tongue in cheek joke there, but uh, you're going to need help. If it's not you, if you don't have complete control over your network firewall to manage it, and your DNS server, you really need to talk to your network administrator. And if anything we go through today, you don't understand that has to do with network administration, take this video replay of this session and show it to your uh, network administrator so that you guys have an understanding of what's needed. Uh, you'll need to pick a host name. When you apply an SSL certificate uh, for use with the outside, 
um, you know, you'll, so uh, for example, in my case today, what we're going to do is we're going to create portal3.cnxcorp.com. cnxcorp.com is our domain. We have control of that. We have control to manage it. So we can add a host name to the DNS called portal3. And so what we'll do is we'll map a valence instance to the outside so that hopefully by the end of the session, you'll be able to um, get, go to portal3.cnxcorp.com and actually get the login screen for that instance. Now, um, typical domain names that customers may pick will be like maybe customer. So like if I had a portal for my outside customers that I want to use, I might, might choose customer.cnxcorp.com or vendor.cnxcorp.com or sales.cnxcorp.com, something that mimics the actual use of that, of that instance is probably most appropriate. So we're, in this case, we're picking portal three. Um, you'll need to assign an outside static IP address for this valence. So this is, it's becoming clear now why you need to be friends with your network administrator, because if you're going to map a valence instance from the outside world into your network, you have to have an outside IP address for that. So typically companies will have a pool of static IP addresses that go to the outside of the network and you, you'll have to have one of those. Uh, be sure you have access to the DNS server for your domain. So for cnxcorp.com, you know, we have access to that so I can make DNS server entries. So we're, whoever manages your DNS, whether that's a, that could be an internal server in your network or it could be an external DNS server. So that's something you'll have to ask your network administrator if you don't know. Uh, be sure you have access to create a NAT, which is network address translation and modify your firewall settings on your network. So. We're, we're gonna need to map an outside IP address to the inside of your network. Your IBMIs typically have an internal IP address. So we'll need to map that outside IP address that we assign to an internal address on the inside. And we need to modify firewall settings to allow that translation on the ports that we choose. Um, also be prepared to buy an SSL certificate. Okay, with a credit card. Well, I'm actually gonna do that on this session that I'm gonna actually buy us a an SSL certificate from a third party um, certificate authority called DigiCert. Um, sometimes companies will already have what's called a wildcard certificate, which means the certificate can be applied to any host name. So like, um, as long as it has like, for example, cnxcorp.com on the end or whatever your company's domain is, uh, that certificate can be applied. And it's basically like a star dot cnxcorp.com and that can be applied to any host name. In our case, I'm going to purchase a certificate that is specific to portal3.cnxcorp.com and that certificate would not work with any other host and domain combination. It would, you have to be going to portal3.cnxcorp.com. Those certificates are generally uh, less expensive. If you pick a specific host, wildcard certificates are more expensive to buy. I'm pretty sure the specific host certificate that we'll buy today is like $59 for one year. And you can get you no know, cheaper if you go two or three years. Um, so that's something that whoever handles security within uh, your, your network or your network administrator would probably know, like, do you already have a wildcard certificate that you might use on a Windows server or a Linux server that's already uh, protecting? And maybe you can get that certificate and import it. Uh, and use it for your valence instance. If you don't know, or you can't find one, or you'd rather just manage that specific name yourself, then I suggest you just pay the $59 or whatever it is, um, and, then, and then buy one specific for whatever host and domain name you choose. Okay, so those are the prerequisites. And let's go through the, the steps that we're gonna go through today. So first of all, we're gonna make sure that instance that the valence instance that I mentioned is operational and working internally. So without the encryption, obviously we wanna make sure the instance that we're gonna use is created and working properly. So I wanna make sure that I can go internally in my network to portal3.cnxcorp.com and make sure that is working on the inside of the network, okay? Then we're going to generate a certificate request with Digital Certificate Manager. That's a tool on IBM I um, that I'll show you how to get to and use. And then we're going to use that certificate request and order a certificate from a trusted certificate authority. That's a third party certificate authority that issues these certificates that are generally recognized by browsers 
as being an authority that is capable of uh, validating a certificate when it comes from a server. So we're going to use DigiCert. That's a very popular one. Um, others, you know, I've seen customers use uh, like GoDaddy is a popular one. Um, Network Solutions, I think they still issue certificates. But uh, I used to use Rapid SSL. In fact, if you if you look at our old blog post that I was mentioning earlier about how to do this process, it it actually brings you through the steps of using Rapid SSL. Rapid SSL was recently purchased by DigiCert, and uh, there's been a lot of consolidation going on in certificate authority. So DigiCert is a big one now. And uh, so what you'll see in that blog post, Rapid SSL no longer applies. The screens that, that you're going through no longer apply, but the general steps do still apply. OK. You also need to verify that you have control over your domain. So when we order, when we order a, a certificate from a certificate authority from DigiCert, they're going to have to go through a process to verify to them that we have we actually have control over that domain. Like they don't want just somebody randomly going and purchasing a certificate that has your domain name in it, like cnxcorp.com. Like you couldn't go buy a certificate for cnxcorp.com because you can't show that you have control over that domain. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, that once we have the certificate, okay, from DigiCert and they've they've issued it to me, then we're going to import that back into DCM. So the so just to take a step back again, so in the second bullet point, we're creating a certificate request with DCM. We use that request to order a certificate from DigiCert. Once we go through all the machinations and get that certificate issued, then we can import that back to uh, the DCM. Once it's in there, then we create. Um, Oh, also, I didn't mention the second part of that bullet point. Um, we then have to assign that to the valence instance. So once we import it to DCM, we then assign it to the valence instance. Then uh, once we have that assigned, then we can create a DNS A record to map the host to the IP address. So in other words, that's just simply mapping whatever external IP address that we've chosen or that we've had assigned from the network. We have to map that to the host. So in this case, we're going to map portal 3cnscorecom to a new outside IP address. And then you have to create a firewall network address translation to map that external port on the outside to the internal port on the inside. And if all this crazy stuff goes, <laughs> goes well, then uh, you should be able to access it from the outside of your network. All right. Those are the steps we're going to go through. So. Um, we're going to use a number of things to do this, some of which I mentioned already, but I'm just going to recap them here for convenience. And I, I will make these slides available uh, somehow. I guess on the video replay, I'll provide a link for how to access these slides um, so you don't have to be uh, writing all this down. But uh, let me start over here. So the first one is we're going to use the HTTP server admin. That's the thing on port 2001, HTTP admin. We're going to be using the digital certificate manager. And that's a really crazy uh, login address uh, for the digital certificate manager. There's a way to get to it just by, I think, from port 2005. And then you can click a bunch of links to get to this. But I, I found that on a lot of customer systems, port 2005 does not work right. So I just keep this link handy. And you can see the part that I have, cnxdevx.cnxcorp.com. If you were to just to change that to your IBM IIT address, or if you have a host name there to replace that with this, these both of these links should work on your system if you have the uh, HTTP admin uh, server instance started. Okay, then we're going to be using Media Temple. Uh, MediaTemple.net is who hosts CNX's DNS. So CNXCorp.com, that domain registration points to MediaTemple.net for DNS management. So I have a management interface. I can go to MediaTemple.net and manage the DNS entries. Now your, your DNS is almost certainly going to be different. You either have a different internal DNS server or um, you know, it's, it's managed by another outside company like we have Media Temple, you might have a different one. That's something your network administrator would know. Um, we're also gonna use our, the, um, we're gonna log into my Cisco router interface that manages our connection to the internet here at the CNX office. And we're gonna configure the network address translation and port forwarding. This is also going to be very specific to CNX. Yours is almost certainly going to be different. You'll have a different router. It may not be a Cisco, maybe something else, and your screens are going to be totally different. So just take 
these steps that I do through Media Temple and Cisco router modifications as just a general guideline. Uh, and then we're also going to obviously use DigiCert to go and uh, I sometimes will refer to these certificates as SSL certificates. They're really more accurately called domain validation certificates, right? They, they, they were encryption certificates on Digis on DigiCert when we go there, they're, they're called domain validation certificates. All right. All right. So let's see. Um, I have one last slide here that I just wanted to point out. Um, just some information about the IP addresses that right now, uh, th there's two mappings here. The first one is not secure and the second one is secure. Right now, the way I have it mapped is the not secure version uh, to the outside, to the inside. So inside of my network, if you look on the right side at the top, 192.168.75.76 is the IP address of the IBMI. And I currently have the instance running on port 80. So I'm going to switch out of the presentation now and just start going through the process. You've probably gotten the idea from all of that, that this is not, you know, easy. If your head is spinning, you know, <laughs> stick with me and uh, know that we'll have the video recording and you can always pause it and go back and follow the steps more slowly. So I have all the links set up here of the different things that I'm going to use. I'll probably open all that up in a moment, but let me just first go to um, my, my base valence instance for this system is at cnxdevx.cnxcorp.com 6060. So this is my base instance and I want to just log in here. So this is not the instance that I want to secure. This is my base instance. So on your system, this would typically be 7060, or if you're still on valence 52, it would be uh, 7052 perhaps. Um, but you should probably already, you should already know whatever, however it is to log into your base instance. So I'm log in here and I'm going to go into instance manager just to show you what instances I have here. And this one I create, I just created this yesterday in preparation for the session. So this is my portal three instance. Um, you know, that's a library and IFS path. I just called everything portal three, just so that I would know it. I have it running on port 80 right now for convenience. You know, typically you, it's not very typical for customers to run um, stuff on port 80, but I, I did, just did it that way so I wouldn't have to use a port number. So I can show you if I go to portal3.cnscorp.com, I can press enter and I can get to that portal three instance without having any port number because a non-secured instance default is port 80. So the browser just, uh, has that as uh, the default port. That's what it's on right now, port 80. Um, I could use the IP address in here, but I'm going to show you um, in just a second after I access Media Temple how I mapped this portal3.cnxcorp.com to log in here. So now let me go and open up all my links. So I'm going to just open up all these in different tabs. That's my HTTP admin. It'll take me a moment just to sort of open all this up. So that's the HTTP admin. So I'm just going through and I'm opening up all the different things that I'm going to use. This is digital certificate manager coming from my IBMI. Um, this is my login to media temple. This is my login to the Cisco router. <laughs> okay. A lot of stuff here. And this is my login to DigiCert. Okay. So we're going to use all these things, server admin, digital certificate manager, Media Temple, the router, and DigiCert. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I think I want to go into, um, we're just going to take a lay of the land here. I'm going to log into Media Temple. Get my password here. Okay. Again, your interface for how you manage your DNS could be totally different. This is just like an example here. So I want to edit my DNS zone file. And these are all CNX's DNS entries. Um, and if I go down here, I'm looking for portal three. So there's portal three.cnxcorp.com. So that's what's called an A record. And all that does is map a, a host and domain combination. So portal three.cnxcorp.com to a specific IP address. And this is, this is an internal IP address, all right? So when I, in my browser, when I'm typing portal3.cnxcorp.com, it's just mapping to this internal IP address. And then I don't have to remember what this IP address is, okay? So this is only available to the inside of the network. You cannot use that on the outside, it would not work. But hopefully by the end, you can, you can try it. 
Okay. So, so now that, now that I think we're ready to actually start going through the process now that you've seen how all this is working as a starting point. So just to recap, uh, this is my instance portal 3cnxcorpcom It's coming through the browser saying it's not secure. There's, there's no security on it and I can only access it from internal in the network. So by the end of the session, I'm hoping this says secure. Okay. And that, you all can actually go to portal3.cnxcorp.com at the end of the session. And I probably won't leave it, won't leave portal3.cnxcorp.com up long after the session is over. So if you're watching this on a video replay, it probably will not be working for you at that time. This is just for the, the purposes of this, uh, of this live demonstration. Okay, hey, so- Richard, Real quick. Yeah. Uh, Jack had a question in the chat. All right, go ahead. Uh, can that be used to map the URI to a particular port other than the default 80? Uh, well, yeah, well, the DNS, the, the DNS server at MediaTown, it's a good question. Uh, DNS is only for uh, relating a host to an IP address. So that's just mapping a host and, and domain combination to an IP address. So then on your, uh, in your firewall, that's where you do the port, what we call port forwarding, I suppose. So like you could take portal3.cnxcorp.com port 80 in the browser and through your firewall, if you want it, let's say your valence instance that you want to secure is running internally on port 1234, okay? So in your firewall, you could map the outside IP address port 80 to the internal IP address port 1234, okay? Hopefully that answers the question. If not, uh, Jack, go ahead and uh, update the chat and, and Johnny will come in. I also should mention, you, you can please put any questions you want in the chat and, um, and Johnny, uh, if, there's, if it's stuff that you know, can wait till the end, we can wait till the end or you can feel free to interrupt and I'll answer it as we go. It's no problem either way. Okay, uh, let's see. So we're going to generate the certificate request with the digital certificate manager. So we're gonna start here, Digital Certificate Manager, okay? Uh, you can select, you have to first select the certificate store. That's the, the thing on the IBM I. I've never used anything other than the system uh, certificate. Sometimes if you've never been in here before, you won't have an entry for system. When you click select a certificate store, you won't have an entry for star system. I've seen this on some IBM I's. Uh, I would say go to IBM, uh, IBM's documentation for the digital certificate manager. And there's a, there's a process you have to go through to create, initially create the system store. I already have mine, so we're not gonna go through that. And if you come in here and you see star system, all you gotta do is make sure it's click and, and do continue. Now the, cert, the, the system certificate store will have a password, okay? And you might, if you get in there, you, you know, you might panic at first thinking, well, you don't have the password, but it's really easy to reset. So like if you have security officer authority, if you just hit this reset, if you don't know what the password is, you can just hit reset and you can set it to whatever you want. If, you, if you're, you're signing into this as QSEC offer, you can just set it to whatever you want um, and then use it here. I recommend to customers that they set the password to the same password that they use for QSEC offer. That way, if you already have QSEC offer authority and you've set it, there's never any question then what it is. So that's what I've done. And mine is just the same as QSEC offer. Okay, now what that has done is it, it is set or selected the current system, uh, current certificate store as a system store. So I've got more options over here now. Everything I do over here now is against the system certificate store. So if I open up FastPath, there's this first option, it's called work with server and client certificates. I can click that, okay? Now this is a list of certificates I already have on the system. You may not have any on your system. Uh, I already have one called portal two and some others, but I don't have a portal three. So I'm gonna click the create button. I'm gonna create a new one, okay? All right, so uh, I don't know why this terminology is used like this, but it, the, the, what you want to use is VeriSign or other internet certificate authority. This just means uh, who is going, who do you want to issue the certificate? We're just telling IBMI's digital certificate manager, we just want it to be some outside internet authority. Okay, continue. All right, now, 
there is a few things. I would take all the defaults here, except I always look for where it says required. These are really the only things I ever fill in. So certificate label, I usually always make, I don't think it matters what the certificate label is. This is more like for your information, right? But I always, just as a general rule, I make it the full domain name just for, so it's not ambiguous. So portal3.cnxcorp.com. And the common name is probably the most important thing on here because this is what really tells it what you're securing. So the, the certificate authority will issue the certificate based on what it says in the common name. Okay, so if this is portal4.cnxcorp.com or customer.cnxcorp.com, whatever it says in here, that is the website or that is what you have to use in the URL for the certificate to work. Okay. All right, so now there's a couple other things required. Uh, you got to put in your organization name, which is just generally, you know, whatever your company name is. Um, the state or province is a little strange. It has to be a minimum of three characters. So normally you always put like IL in there uh, and that doesn't work because it has to be a minimum of three characters. So I usually just spell out the name, spell out the name of the state. And then country is only two digits. So we put, put US, okay? And uh, if you're in a different country or state or province, you know, you have to figure out what to put in there. I don't think this is validated, really. I think this is really just uh, if somebody looks at the certificate details, it shows the name of the company and the, the province and, and country on the certificate. That's really all you have to do. You don't have to fill out any of this other stuff. I've never had a reason to. Um, so as long as you have the certificate label, the common name, organization, state, and country, just click continue. And then what you're going to get is this crazy looking response that has the certificate request and in, in embedded in all of this is, is all the information and the, and the, uh, the request information that we'll, we'll need to paste into DigiCert. So at the moment, I'm just going to leave this on the screen. Okay. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to come back to it and flip over to DigiCert. Okay. And I'm going to log into DigiCert. Oh, let's see here. All right, now there's a request now. Okay, so we're using DigiCert, but if you're using GoDaddy or Network Solutions or something else, uh, you know, yours is gonna look different. But if you're using DigiCert, you just go to request a certificate. And I've got other management things. I can go in here and look at all the other certificates I have already through DigiCert. But the quickest way is just to request a certificate. And here's where experience is helpful because you probably look at this and say, what the heck certificate do I wanna order? Really, you're looking for a DV certificate because DV stands for domain validation, right? It's a domain validation certificate for a website, okay? And then there's the two I was talking about. There's a wildcard certificate, which will really be able to secure anything that has your domain in it, okay? Um, and, but I want to do a standard one, which is just very specific to portal3.cnxcorp.com. That's the, the cheapest one and... Uh, that's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so just a standard GeoTrust standard DV domain validation certificate. So now, first thing it's asking me to do is to paste in my certificate request. So I'm going to go back to my digital certificate manager. I'm going to copy this. Make sure you get from the, the dashes at the beginning all the way to the dashes at the end. I'm going to copy that, go back here and paste it. All right, so it automatically saw that that was for portal3.cnxcorp.com. It looks like it's good. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything under advanced. No. Uh, okay, so the validation method. Let's take a look at this for a second. So how am I gonna prove that I have control of this domain? Um, so I'm using, the, I'm gonna use this recommended option. Uh, this allows me to put a special DNS entry in that DigiCert will check to make sure that I actually have control over that DNS server, okay? There's other options here where you could email like the technical or administrative contact uh, that is on your domain registration. But I have found in practice that that is typically very difficult because like your domain may be registered and have a, 
um, a name of somebody within your company that you don't even know, or the, you know, an email address for somebody you have no access to, who 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 originally ordered the domain. Um, so I find this one since we have to have access to the DNS server anyway. I find this one is just the easiest. So we'll we'll say DNS text uh, verification method, and you'll get to see what all this is. If you don't understand what this is, you'll get to see it in just a moment. Okay. So let's go down here. Okay, now here's the good part. All right, so this is, you're gonna hopefully not get to see all my credit card details. <laughs> so <laughs> I told you we were gonna, we're getting down into the weeds with this. I'm actually gonna put my credit card info in. So I'm gonna stop the screen sharing for just a second while I do that. Hopefully you can still hear me. Johnny, can you verify you can still hear me and then uh, you can't see my screen? Yeah, I can hear you and can't see the screen. Okay, so I'm just putting in the credit card details right now. All right, and I'm clicking a button to agree to the services agreement, and I'm just come clicking a submit button. And as soon as I verify it goes off the screen, I'll come back on with the screen sharing. I'm just waiting for the screen to come back. Okay. I'm coming back. I'm, I'm going to come back on the screen. So I told you this was going to be a messy process. All right, I'm coming back on. All right. You see me, Johnny? Yep, can see your screen. Okay, so I tried to submit this and I got an error because it says, please fill out field. I didn't click this box. So we were up here, I pasted this in. You know, and then I went down to the credit card stuff and I forgot to select the coverage link. So if I click this, it's like, how many years uh, do I want this to be valid for? So I'm just gonna click one year, okay? But you can do it for many years and you'll get different prices. So it's gonna be $59, okay? So now, um, sorry, I'm gonna stop sharing again because I need to scroll back down to the credit card info. All right, so I'm submitting that again. It just says waiting. Okay, now I'm gonna come back on again. Screen sharing is coming in just a second. Okay. All right, so hopefully you can see my screen again and this is my order. So I, I placed the order. And uh, over here, DigiCert's pretty nice in, in telling you uh, you know, what's going on. The previous one that we used to use rapid SSL wasn't so great with that, but here you can say, see, I submitted the order. Um, I submitted the uh, request, certificate request. And now I, I'm at this step here. I have to prove control over the domain, all right? So I'm gonna click this because it's gonna give me instructions on how to do that, all right? Um, so I selected the verification method with using a DNS, DNS TXT entry. So what it what it's telling me here and i'm not going to click this but you know when you get to do this you might want to click this for the detailed instructions but i've done this before so i sort of know how to do it so what you have to do is copy this crazy code right here and i think this only works one time so i'm going to click copy and then i'm going to go over to media temple which is my dns server okay and i'm going to make a txt entry i'm going to add a row to my dns table all right and I'm gonna say a TXT type of entry, and I'm gonna paste in that crazy code that Digicert gave me, and I'm gonna say this is for portal three. That for portal3.cnxcorp.com, I got a TXT entry, which is different than an A entry. It's the A entry that does the mapping between a host and, uh, and an IP address. So this is TXT is sort of a special entry. And if I save that, let's see if this is gonna save. Hopefully this didn't time out. All right, now I can go back to DigiCert. Oh, no, that's over here, DigiCert. Okay, now I can go back here and click the check button. So what this will do is, is going to DigiCert's actually going to go out to our DNS server and say, give me the TXT entry for portal3.cnscorp.com. And if it comes back with this code, 
that proves that I have control over that DNS server. All right, so click check. Okay, so it said I couldn't find it. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's cancel this and do it again. Hopefully it'll give me a different code. Okay, copy. Maybe I didn't do it fast enough. Paste, save. Okay, yeah, it worked that time. All right, so I've proven that I had control over the domain now, but it still says DigiCert needs to issue the certificate. And this is where I was like, part of doing this process live uh, in a session like this is a little crazy because sometimes this can take a while. Um, so hopefully I'll just hit refresh here and maybe, what I'll, maybe it'll be issued quickly. Okay, it looks like it was issued. Yes, because it's now, I would say, now that it's been issued, I get this option over here to download the certificate, right? So, uh, all right, so all I really need is the, there, there's going to be many options, and this is super confusing, okay? Um, there's many different types of certificate formats that various servers can import. And I, the IBM uh, Digital Certificate Manager can import several different kinds of certificates. I've had the most luck with the one that's called P7B, okay? So if you're not using DigiCert and you're you know, using GoDaddy or something else, try to find when you're accessing the certificate, if you can find the P7B. And there's some other things I, I will note for you to look out for as well uh, in a bit. So I'm gonna show this. This is the certificate I just downloaded, okay? So let me, let me go back here. So I went through that fast, so let me do it again. So I click this to download it. Uh, I'm, on a, I'm on a Mac, so don't let that confuse you. I just downloaded it. Um, what I'm gonna do is zip this because I need to upload this to the IBM I. So to zip it on a Mac, I just click compress. Now I have a zip file. If I don't zip it down, it has a, it has a tendency to get corrupted when I upload it. So it uploads better as a binary. So, and you can very easily upload that through Valence. So I'm gonna go back to my base instance of valence and go into the IFS Explorer. If you're on valence 5.2, by the way, everything I'm doing applies to valence 5.2 as well. There's no difference between 5.2 and 6.0 or really any of the older versions of valence. You can do this whole process with any of the versions. Um, I have a folder on my IFS root called DCM. Now it doesn't have to be, you, you can, I created that folder myself just to upload certificates into. The DCM stands for Digital Certificate Manager. Um, but you know you can create a DCM folder or you can create any folder you want to upload it. So I generally will, this is what I'll do, I'll say new folder within DCM and I'll call it Portal 3. Again, you don't have to do exactly this. All we're trying to do is get the certificate up onto the IBM I on the IFS somewhere so we can import it into DCM. Okay, so, but I, just to categorize them, I put it in DCM portal three, and now I will transfer, upload, select a file. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Yes, there's the zip file I created. So that's the certificate and I had zipped it down and now I'm uploading it. Okay, so there, so there it is. Uh, I'm going to just click rename here so I can copy this whole file name out. Okay. So I'm, I've, oh, wait a minute. I actually want to try to copy it. So I can't copy it from there. I'm just going to copy this name. So I know, so when I import it into DCM, I need to know the full path of this file. Actually, I'm doing this wrong. I forgot, I forgot a step. Sorry. I've uploaded this certificate as a zip file. Okay. So now I have to unzip it. I forgot that step, sorry. So got to click archive, unzip. Yes, okay. So this is the file that I want. So if I was to have just uploaded the P7B file directly without zipping it first, then it, I, I, I've seen that it has a tendency of getting corrupted, okay? So it's better to upload it as a zip, then do an archive unzip and then I'm just going to copy this file name here like this. 
All right, now let's see. I want to get back to Digital Certificate Manager. Okay, this is where I left off in Digital Certificate Manager. So I'm just going to click OK. And if I click, now I'm ready to click Import. Okay, when I was here before, I clicked Create to create the request. Now I have the actual certificate. Now I'm going to import it back. And now I have to know the full path. Actually, this is the one I did yesterday, so I'm just going to more easily just change this to Portal 3, okay? Because I think it's the same otherwise, yeah. So that's the full path on my IFS to the certificate. Now, if I click Continue and this doesn't work, then we're really stuck, <laughs> okay? Because sometimes it doesn't work. Okay, excellent. It says the certificate has been imported. If you can get to this point, you're sort of home free, okay? At least with getting the certificate, because many, many things can go wrong with importing that certificate. So try to do it exactly as I did it. Get, get, the, get the P7B file, zip it down, upload it, and then unzip it once it gets to your system and then import it that way. Um, another thing to look out for, um, if, you get, if you think you've done everything exactly like I have done, and, you, and it says this certificate could not be imported because it's from an unknown certificate authority, then what you will need to do is go to work with CA certificates. That's the second one under FastPath. Okay, you can see in here, I have a, um, a certificate authority. These are, the, the certificate authority is basically identifying, well, who do your server and client certificates come from? What certificate authorities do they come from? The IBM I will have defaults in there, um, and, and some of them were, are already in there, so you don't need to worry about this. But if you can't import your service certificate, you may have to import the, um, the certificate that identifies the certificate authority. And when I say certificate authority, I mean that's like DigiCert, GoDaddy, or whoever the authority is. They have like a base level certificate. And if I go back here, like say you do exactly what I do, and you get the certificate from DigiCert, and it won't import. Well, you may have to get, um, let's see. There are, I click more options here, yeah, okay. Yes, okay. So if you click download certificate as, and you click more options, you see this DigiCert global root CA, and the inter there's also an intermediate certificate. So this certificate right here, identifies my actual individual certificate that I purchased. But uh, DigiCert has the, an intermediate certificate and a root certificate that you may also need to download and import, okay? So I don't need to do that because they're already identified by my digital certificate manager. So if you have that problem, you may need to download those and you will import them. Let me go back here. You're gonna import them through here. Work with CA certificates, click import, and it's just the same process. You'll, you'll zip those down, get them up on your IFS and import them. Then once you do that and you have them imported, then you can go back and try to import your server level certificate again, okay? So I would say, try to import your server certificate first, just see if it'll work straight away. And if it doesn't, go back and get those lower level certificates and import those first and then go back again. All right, that's enough on that. Let's see uh, where we're at. So we got verify. I'm just looking at my notes here. All right, so we are ready to go to do our mapping. And let me go back to, we're gonna now, now that we have our certificate, we are going to map the, uh, no, sorry, I'm backing up a little bit. I'm gonna map that, I'm gonna assign that, assign that to the valence instance. So. Sorry, my, my meeting controls are getting in the way here. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the HTTP server administration and show you guys something. So I've already got, this is the portal three instance that uh, we have running this Apache server. And if I go into security, SSL is currently disabled, okay? And if I go to the digital certificate manager, there's an option here when I'm working with server and client certificates, now that the portal3.cnxcorp.com is in my list, I can now assign that to applications, okay? So 
various applications that are running on the IBM I can identify themselves to the digital certificate manager that they're capable of having an SSL certificate applied to them. Okay. So when I click assign to applications, I get a list of those things. All right. Those are all the applications that are capable of receiving an SSL certificate. And I'm looking here and I'm looking here and I don't see portal three. Okay. In the list. So I can't assign it to portal three. And that's because I haven't turned on SSL. So if I go into the HTTP admin, go to my instance and enable SSL. And now this down here, once I enable that, I have to give it sort of a, a, an SSL application name that will be displayed in the digital certificate manager. I never ever type anything in here. I just drop down this list and it's giving you a suggested name and just click on that. And so it'll be QIBM HTTP server portal three. All right. So as soon as I hit okay, I don't think I even need to restart the instance. As soon as I save that, it should be identified to, and I'm going to have to refresh this list. So let me go back here and click assign to applications. And I think it should be in the list now. Uh, yes, here it is right here. It's the last one in the list. So now I can assign that to the application. All right. Say, okay. And now if I view, so I can click portal3.cnxcorp.com, click view. And if I, this gives me all the details of the, um, of the certificate, it tells me when it will expire. So it'll expire in October, 2021. And if I scroll down, I can view applications that it's assigned to, and it's currently assigned to that HTTP server. Okay. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to switch the port number that the instance is running on. So it's currently running on port 80. I really want it to be running on port 443 because port 443 is the default for the uh, for SSL. So if I type in uh, HTTPS portal 3cnscorpcom just like it used to uh, check on port 80, it automatically will check on port 443. That's the SSL default. So I'm going to change that in the system. And I'm going to do that. Uh, this is actually a good little side thing for you to see if you want to change the, the, the port number. Um, the best thing to do here is to first go to the instance record. File VVINST holds the instance manager records for each instance. And this is the port number right here. So portal three is currently running on port 80. And I'm going to switch that to port 443 and update that. All right. Now, if I look at instance manager, I'm just going to go back into it. Now it says it's running a port 443. Now it's not actually listening in port 443 yet because I haven't restarted the server instance. But the last thing to do is go into, uh, let's see, where is that? I think that's under general server configuration. Well, there's port 80, but it's just as easy to go in edit configuration file, scroll down here and say, listen on port 443. Okay. And okay. Now, as soon as I restart the server instance, it'll be listening on port 443. So I'm gonna stop portal three. Now it's stopped, now I'm gonna start it. Okay, so now it should be listening on port 443. So let's go back here. And if I refresh this, I probably, it's probably not gonna work, right? Because it's trying to find that instance on port 80. So let's see what happens when I type in portal3.cnxcorp.com and I put an HTTPS on the front of it. So if I have an HTTPS on the front of it, it'll automatically try to get there through port 443. And it is not listening on that, okay. Oh, I think it might be, hmm. let's see, is it starting? I just make sure I got it right, port 443. I'm gonna to try to do it in a different browser just to see if maybe it's not cached. No, oh, hmm, okay. So let's see, what did I do wrong? Johnny or Sean, if you guys seen anything that I did wrong, let me know. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it's not listening on port 443 anymore. Hmm. I wonder if there's a conflict maybe with something else that's running on port 443. Yeah. 
Did you see me do anything wrong? No, but I, I mean, we might have a conflict. Uh, I, I did not see you do anything wrong. Oh, I wonder if I still have Portal 2 running from yesterday. Uh, no, I don't see that. Hmm. I think I, did I delete Portal 2? Hmm. Could you guys, do you guys know how to check and see if anything is listening on port 443? Like to do the, um, the connections? Like the, if something's listening on that port? Uh, uh, you're asking yeah, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. Can check. you check that out and see, see what's listening on port 443? Refuse to connect. Okay. Well, actually, while you guys do that, I'll, I'll continue on and we'll look at the Cisco router mapping. So you do have a question in the chat too, while we're doing that, if you want to, there was a question. Okay. Let me just log into the Cisco router here. This is real life. You'll run into problems as well. So this is my firewall. So I'm going to get a firewall and I'm going to go into the static NAT settings. And I've already, this is really a, not an easy thing to go through and it's a little convoluted. So, and, and I didn't think it would be that useful to kind of show you guys how to do this on a, on my version of a Cisco router. So what I had done is already set these up. So my internal IP address is 192.168.75.76. And the external address that I've assigned for this portal three is this 104.592.09.13. And I said the services that I want to pass through are HTTP and HTTPS, which is basically port 80 and port 443 by default. Now you could do these for specific um, IP addresses and I'm not doing like port forwarding or anything. I'm just saying if it's if you're using port 80 on the outside address, it's coming in on port 80 on the inside address. And if it's using port 443 on the outside address, it's coming in port 443 on the inside address. So this is a basic router. So your company probably has a more sophisticated router and you can put in things like the port forwarding I mentioned earlier. You could be coming from port 80 on the outside and go to any port on the inside, okay? And that's gonna really be up to whoever manages your firewall and, and your, your router to, to set that up. But uh, so this is the IP address that I wanna use on the outside. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna go to Media Temple, which manages my DNS. And I'm gonna look for my entry for port 443. And remember I had this mapped to my internal address and I'm gonna, I'm gonna now put it to the outside, okay? So my, my router is already saying I'm going to map this address from the outside to this internal address ports, both ports 80 and ports 443. Okay. So now when I switch this, it knows how to go to the router. So I'm going to change that. And, you know, I wonder if this, this record here is maybe messing up my, my mapping. Uh, it shouldn't, but I'm going to delete that anyway, because this, this thing that we use to validate the domain for Digicert, uh, that is only needed temporarily. So once you validate it, you can get rid of it. So I'm going to save the changes. Ah, of course, timed out. So I, I might have to redo that. So admin, edit DNS zone. So there's the portal three. <clears throat> putting in the IP address to the outside and I'm getting rid of this temporary domain validation record. Save changes. Okay, I'm just gonna just scroll down here and just make sure it's saved. Okay, I have the outside IP address now and that last thing is gone. So that looks good. So I should be done with the DNS now. Um, and, you know, I could just try this again. You know, it should, should work from the outside. No, so something is wrong, like the instance is like actually not starting up or something. Did you guys find anything? Yeah, we, we have a service that <clears throat> is running. It's VVSERV 5.2 that's on 
Oh, that's running on port. Okay. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> okay. You know what? I, <laughs> I should have known that. Okay. I am going to, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, but isn't that running on a different, uh, all right. I'm going to temporarily shut that down because we won't have to keep that down for very long. So, okay. So the guys helped me out by finding out we have another service running on port 443. Okay. And, oh, but that's coming in on, that's coming in on IP address 75.75. Like we have multiple IP addresses. So like I'm trying, I'm mapping to 75.76. So that's another interesting thing. Like the IBM eyes can have multiple IP addresses. Um, so, oh, but that, you know what? I just realized that, um, yeah, okay. So I think we're using a wildcard. So see how we are listening on a specific IP address on this instance that's conflicting, right? So I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna go back over to my portal three. This is actually another, another good thing to show. That's a side item. So this is the portal three. I'm going to edit the configuration file. So we're listening. Star means for every IP address to find on your IP, IBM I, it's listening on that port. And that's not what we want. So we want to just listen on IP address 76, right? Um, so if I go to my router, so see, we're mapping the outside IP address to the inside IP address 75.76. So hopefully this will work. And then we don't have to shut down that other instance. Does that make sense? Let's see if this starts. Okay. All right. Now, let's see if this works. Please give me a sign on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it may take a moment to start up because we, we just started up the instance, but at least I'm not getting an error immediately. So I think it's probably going to work. Well, let's give it a second. Okay, excellent. So now, now uh, thanks guys for saving me on that one. That was the right answer. Um, so now I have access to the instance and you can see now I'm getting this little lock button and if I click that and click on certificate and look at details, it'll, you'll see the details of the certificate, right? It should say somewhere in here, it's issued by CNX Corporation, uh, portal3.cnxcorp.com. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Did it say CNX Corporation in there somewhere? Country or region? Hmm. Okay, so yeah, there's the expiration date. So it's one year from today. I don't know. I thought the company name, I'm probably looking right at it and not seeing it. But normally in here, you can see like the, that it was issued by CNX Corp. I'm not, I'm not finding that. But anyway, it's uh, definitely secured and validated by DigiCert, and uh, and that looks good. So now I, I'm wondering, I'll, I'll get to the chat questions in just a moment, but uh, somebody that's on the outside of our network who is listening to me right now, if you wouldn't mind, just go to portal3.cnxcorp.com. Oh, you have to put the HTTPS in front of it. Uh, HTTPS colon slash slash portal3.cnxcorp.com. You don't have to put the rest of this and like verify to us if you can actually access it and then paste it in the chat or let us know in chat if you can access it or not. See if you get a login screen. Um, I will, as a, as a extra, as a bonus item, I will show you how to do a redirect uh, so that you don't have to put the HTTPS on there. So let's see, let me look at the chat here. Paul says he got it. Okay, cool. All right, let me look at some of the chat items and then uh, can you please show again how to change ports? Yeah, okay. So let's see. Uh, if anybody has any other questions, go ahead and post them now. And then I will go through, I'll show how to change ports again. And then I will also, um, I'm going to show you how to do a redirect. So your users can just type in portal3.cnscorp.com. They don't have to worry about the HTTPS part. And then uh, when I'm done with that, I'll come back and look at the chat again. All right, so changing ports uh, is really, really two steps. Um, I went to the base instance and I went to Nitro File Editor. And, and by the way, this will be on the video replay. So, you know, if I go through it too fast, you can, you'll, you'll just be able to see it on the replay. 
and you're going to edit file vvinst, that's the instance file. And, uh, you know, just edit the record for the instance that you, you care about, and you can change the port to whatever you want there. Okay. Then once you do that, you'll go to the HTTP server administration. You'll choose the server or the instance that you want to edit, and you'll edit the port number here. Okay. This is really not valence stuff. This is more IBM Apache server configuration, you know, so th this is documented in IBM docs, but, uh, that's how you would do that. I think, um, and maybe Sean and, or Johnny could help me out on this uh, question too. There might be something in portal admin or two in another spot that you might have to change the port. Although I don't think it matters. Does anybody, you guys know? Port, <clears throat> the port number? Yeah. I, oh, I, it might be here, like to access the login page. Some things yeah. may be linked to the login page. Yeah. So if I, it, okay, I'm at, I'm at portal3.cnxcorp.com right now. So I'll, I'll log into that. So if I go into portal admin from that instance, so I'm looking at that instance's settings. If you scroll down, there's a URL to access the login page. And I guess this doesn't, when, when instance manager copies this, um, I don't know where this is actually used at, but you know, you can put in whatever you want here. Like to access the login page, I would want this hdvs.portal3.cnxcorp.com. Okay, so you know here is what you put in whatever you want. I, I think this might be used somewhere on screens where it says, "Okay, go back to the login page" or something. Um, and so you'll you would want that to be the exact link that you would want the users to have in URL. Um, but I don't think that's used in that many places, so maybe that's not that big of a deal. Okay. Uh, let me come back to the chat and see if there's anything else in the chat. And stick around. I know we're we're over time, uh, but I, I knew this could be uh, close. Uh, uh, so if you want the bonus material, stick around, and we'll I'll show you how to do the redirect. Uh, or if you have to go, you can catch it on the video replay. So let's see. I got another question here. In V6, are all users allowed to change the current environment by default, or is there a setting to give authority to the user to switch environments? Um, that, that's a good question. Um, it just depends on how, what environments the user is authorized to. So, uh, if the user is authorized to only one environment in portal admin, then they won't have an option to change environments. Um, if you have them authorized to more than one environment, then yeah, they have the option to change the environment. Uh, over here, they can change, change the environment by clicking this button. Um, uh, and Sean and Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong in that, but I'm pretty sure they won't even get that option if they're only assigned to one environment. That's, that's true. Okay. All right, so let's go to bonus material. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do a redirect. And, and look, there's many different ways to do a redirect, but I find that the easiest way to implement it is to just have a really minimized uh, additional server listening on the port number that you're interested in. Uh, and, and, and we're interested in listening on port 80, okay? Because port, if the user just types in portal3.cnxcorp.com in the, in the URL, uh, that's gonna be port 80, right? Just like we were running on before. But we don't want that thing to do anything other than redirect to port 443. So what I will normally do, and, and there's ways I could go into portal three and I could create a virtual server in there that will do a redirect, but I find that too complicated. And if, if you know how to do that, that's totally fine. I'm gonna show you the way I normally do it. So I'm just gonna create a basic HTTP server and I'm gonna call it the same name as portal three, only with an R at the end, okay? So I'm gonna call it portal three R and I know the R just means redirect, okay? And I'm gonna call, so I just click create HTTP server, portal three R. And you don't have to fill out anything else. You just like literally just keep going next, 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 finish. And now that I have portal three R created, I can just edit the configuration file and you can leave all of this in here. And I'm gonna go and get, I know another one of these that has, I'm, I'm just flipping to a different instance to get, to copy this one line. This, this is like the one line that matters. It's the redirect. So I'm going to just copy this out to get the format of it. This is one we used for, for another project. And I'm going to go back to portal three R. You can see we have a lot of instances there. 
Uh, so I'm back to portal 3 R. I'm editing the configuration file and I'm just going to squeeze this line in here that does a redirect permanent. And so this is saying redirect, a permanent redirect. And the slash just means whatever. So if I type in portal3.cnxcorp.com and any, literally anything that's after it, I don't care, whatever it is, what do I really want them to, to go to? And I wanted to go to portal3.cnxcorp.com. So it'll, uh, but the HTTPS is the important part. And so what'll happen is the, the browser will get a redirect message saying, hey, I really want you to go here. And then the browser would actually redirect and you would see this in the URL. So I click OK, and hopefully there's nothing listening on port 80. Um, I'm going to just try to start this and see if it'll run on port 80. Uh, Portal 3R, just, I'm just double checking right now. Uh, I'm going to actually just change this to listen on 192.168.75.76, so it's specific to just that IP address, port 80. OK, and now I'm going to start it. And it looks okay. All right, so now let's try, I'm just gonna to go to another tab here and I'm just gonna type in portal3.cnscorp.com with no HTTPS on it, enter. And did I get the redirect or not? Hmm. I was gonna, I was expect, and it might be a cache issue. So let's, I'm going to open up my Chrome tools and just disable cache. Somebody on the outside wants to try just portal 3cnx There it goes. It worked that time. So it was a cache issue. I think it just remembered that I had been to port 80 before uh, for that. So you see now it, uh, it switched to secure. Okay. So I don't know if you see anything in Chrome tools for that redirect. But does somebody on the outside just want to check that? If you can just go to portal3.cnxcorp.com and see if it'll redirect you. So you no longer should have to put the HTTPS on the front. Uh, okay. okay. Paul is confirming that he was redirected. That is great. Okay. Uh, missing R, Laura E says missing R. No, you don't. Uh, you don't have to put an R on here. This, this name really has nothing to do with the name of the, the Apache instance. This is just basically, uh, you know, that that's the um, the domain, the host and domain that is uh, being mapped by the DNS server. And just through the mappings of the IP addresses, you know, that's how I'm I'm getting to this uh, port 80. So the R is really just from my reference that this is a this is going to redirect. Okay. And uh, that is all we have. That seems to be working. And, and then shortly after this is over, or, uh, we end the session, I will be shutting down portal3.cnxcorp.com <laughs> just so that it's not still open. But uh, hopefully you guys found that useful and uh, we'll, have the, we'll have the replay uh, up uh, shortly this afternoon uh, on video. So uh, thank, I don't know if you need to close us out, Johnny, but uh, I am finished. Thank you, everyone. Excellent, awesome. All right, thanks everybody. Do we have time for a couple of questions, Richard? Oh yeah, please, please go ahead if you want to ask a question. I didn't see any in the chat, so. Okay, well, I, you know, I, I was just waiting for you to wrap up because this is, this mm -hmm. is, I get, I don't know, the specific stuff, but I had specific questions about what you just did. Okay, so you that was you were redirecting everything to, to port eighty. Mm -hmm. now, is there any way to redirect? HTTP protocol to a particular port to the HTTPS. So you, would, I, would I put the list in there for the HTTP? I didn't see how I, I could specify one protocol versus the other in what I'm listening to. Uh, that is, if, um, you want, if you want, I can show, I can, show, I can show you where I am right now in terms of my configuration currently. If that would be helpful. Well, we're well. We're still under recording, so I don't. Okay. We're still recording. We're still recording the session. So let me and and we can follow up afterwards if you want. But let me just uh, let me let me go off video and show my screen again. Sure. <clears throat> we could always pause. Uh, the, the, the port the port number really doesn't have anything to do with uh, whether it's listening uh, 
for security security or not um, it's this setting here security SSL enabled okay right and okay. Then, I, I got I, I got I've got the the SSL license installed it's working that's mm -hmm. fine my mm -hmm. problem the problem my networking team wants me to resolve is that right now it only works if I specifically give them a URL that includes HTTPS they want me to redirect a request to you know and I have individual ports assigned to different valence servers for different mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying they want me to be able to redirect HTTP request to the appropriate HTTPS location Okay, but uh, does, do you want the URL to put a port number? Uh, like, can the user put the port number on the... Yeah, the, the user's providing the port, and the, the link generally have the, the port number. Numbers, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's fine. You can, I, I'm, you know, when I'm redirecting, and still showing my screen here, I'm not using a port number, because the most right. customers want to do it that way. But if you're using an unusual port, and say they, you know, you want to do like right. port 5555, you can do it that way as well. Right. It just... That's totally dependent on how the network administrator has mapped it, you know. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I mean, you, you're giving an example that that's that I works perfectly with the defaults for outside access, and you yeah. wouldn't want outside people to be hitting random ports all over the place. All right. Uh, the way we're rolling out, it's, it's an internally, it's an internal only application, and my mm -hmm. networking people freaked out when I told them the AS400 credentials. We're traveling over the network in plain text, which is what happens in HTTP. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, the the added bonus is that our uh, our, our certificate of authority is an internally issued one. So for us, PKS twelve was a was a better format because that gives you the whole stack of the, of the chain of trust. Mm -hmm. For for uh, an internally issued a self you know self signed certificate. Mm -hmm. Which is a little bit different. Well, so, I, you know, I, uh, and you know, your network and network administrators can be quite prickly. I know when you suggest other things than what they want, but uh, there's really not any danger to having a non SSL redirect port. Like if you want to have, uh, like for example, like this port 80 that I'm going to, which is not secured. Right. So, well, you in, know, in, uh, in my, you can't in my, really if I was looking at, here's my, that listen. Is that listening for only for HTTP on that port? Yeah, just HTTP on that port. Okay, but you, so, you so could, if it was assigned to eight, to six sixty, yeah, uh -huh. or whatever, which is the same port the other guys is listening to. Yeah, would it would it since it's not SSL, would it handle an HTTP request as opposed to the other guy handling the HTTP? At, S request. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And you could put, you know, you could do things like this. You could put a specific port number on there, like, like right. 660, and go, you know, if anybody goes to portal3.cnxcorp.com, you can redirect them to that. Uh, there are so many different permutations of how right. you oh, that's have it. that it probably would, we probably should take the questioning on this particular one offline and just maybe talk about your network setup, which is probably not relevant to everybody you know on the, no, on no, the that's, that's fair that's okay fair. all right uh let's see does anybody want to uh raise any other questions um let me just look at the chat one more time no 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 more stuff in the chat all right and jack we can follow up uh later if you'd like it's totally fine i'll, I'll let uh, johnny close us out sure thank you okay thanks all right, bye all right thanks everybody Okay, bye. Bye.